Hey, everyone. It's Joe Glines here in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, I'm Jackie in Copenhagen, Denmark. Hey, we timed it. <laughs> right. um, we're uh, getting ready for our next podcast. Today, we were, we were going to talk about um, communicating ways to communicate with your users, right? And there's some some great built-in ways in AutoHotKey, and then at least one method I was going to mention that's a, it's a function. Uh, but um, let's, let's start off with just message box, right, which mm-hmm. I think, 99% of us use a lot. What's interesting is message box, when you really break it down, it's a, it's a very powerful, lot of options, right? A lot of, lot of choices in there. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, it, 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 most people end up not using too much of it, and, and I'm not sure um, where, where the functionality of the message box ends. I'm, I'm not sure that people with... Um, the more advanced your program becomes or the more self-contained, the less message boxes you'll probably show. Mm -hmm. But I still believe there's cases where a message box will actually be useful. Other than just pausing your script, which is another big thing I use it for, is just to to have it stop, you know, not keep going forward when I want to test something. Yeah, and that's that's one of the things that make it great for testing debugging, right? It is it's an automatic pause button. You you can have the the message box on screen, and you can still go in and and look at all your valuables, values, and what was the last lines that were executed, and all that stuff. So yeah, yep. all right. it is a great tool. Yeah, and and just being able to to have you know add button, uh, yeah, different buttons to it, right? Of of choices that they can do. So it's it's pretty and have a a timed where it stops, it goes off after a certain amount of time. Having a default value. Oh wait, no, that's the input box. Sorry, the default value. But you can obviously have the stuff. Then there is, by the way, do you remember what they're called, Jackie? There, there's an advanced. I think it started in like Windows Seven. It's a it's another message box, but it's a little fancier looking. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh, maybe, but yeah, I'm not sure because uh, I'm just thinking about message boxes with icons and stuff. But, yeah. It, it, yeah, it it had different, I had colors too. There was like a red, green, yellow, and blue, if I remember right, um, and certain icons with it. But um, it, uh, it it wasn't any more functional than the normal message box, right? Um, <laughs> okay, because... Uh, I still believe that with the right styles on the message box, you can you can get quite a lot of functionality out of it. Oh, absolutely, you, yeah. You can move away from the OK button by by using an an O four thousand and sixty nine or whatever ninety six or I don't remember the numbers, but yeah, there, there's quite a few numbers where you will actually get the exclamation mark there or yeah. where you can choose to have. Uh, a yes and a no button or yeah. and stuff like that. Right? Um, I, I need to go back and circle back with Maestri Thunda, but he actually built a message box that handles HTML. And mm-hmm. it's insane, like what you can put into it and easily change all the colors and the colors of the text and the size and er- I mean, every, anything you want. Um, yeah, and yeah. it's just as functional, but it, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a custom class, I'm sure, that uh, uh, takes a while to get used to. But it was just like, wow, that's, that's a crazy. Um, yeah, I, I saw at one point where where a good amount of people were kind of looking into to making GUIs using XML, mm-hmm. no HTML, sorry. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, and like an ActiveX. Yeah, uh, it looks great, and it's actually just you interacting with a web page, right? But yeah, the, the idea of doing it like that makes a lot of sense now that the hotkey can can listen in on events that happen and stuff like that. Yeah. And to, to me, it's one of the, like, I know you're the same way with me, right? I don't, I don't really care how it looks to, to people for the most part. Um, but some people be like, Oh, well, it looks that message box looks cheap, right? It looks like it's a throwaway kind of tool thing. So they want something a little fancier. Um, I personally don't usually care, but HTML is a great way to, to handle that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what what I like is just consistency, at least, right? Where if if one thing I'm doing is is themed one way, I, I'd love the the box that I show at a later time to be themed likewise. Sure. But yeah, 
to me it, it doesn't really matter how how well it looks per se it, well, as long as it it's legible you know communicates what you want right the information then great yeah and and that's the thing that I've found out also is if you try and put too much information in a message box people are not going to read it anyway so it's so true <laughs> yeah. um our, our next one let's actually let's 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 stick on this thread a little bit let's do the like the splash text um mm -hmm. which is a cool thing built into auto hotkey right you can splash text and splash image whichever one you want to use but you can push text or an image on the screen and it will it, correct me if i'm wrong it stays there until you tell it to go away is that right yeah yeah uh, it's so long ago that I actually used it for anything actively. It too. But yeah, yeah it it <laughs> it's a good way to put something on screen that's not uh, full GUI, and that's that's probably the thing, right? If, if you want to give people a pause image or please wait while this is loading or if you don't want to have an actual uh, percentage bar loading or if, if you just want to tell the user something, just splash up some text, boom, see here what I'm saying. Um, those functions are usable for that. Yeah, um, actually, the um, which we, we the, which you just alluded to is like a progress bar is also built into Auto Hotkey. Um, it's a way to to show stuff. Um, yeah, which is interesting. Uh, and and in. The tooltip, because it's to me, it's it's kind of similar to the other ones. I love tooltips, especially when you're working with something where you're in a loop or doing something, and you want it to be updated. Right? It's a great way to to be able to track where you are and what's going on. I, I'd say where where I use it most is, as you said yourself, in loops. Let's say I have something; it, it needs to go over an Excel sheet, right? Mm -hmm. Something like that. And and even with everything turned on or off, uh, all screen updating and all that stuff is turned off, no math calculations or anything, it still takes it a little time to do each row of whatever thing I've told it to do. But it needs to do 69,000 rows of that. And to me, it's it's like, yeah, it can do 10 rows a second or whatever. But when I'm just sitting there at my machine, not knowing how long it's been running and thinking, okay, so now it's five minutes and having absolutely no idea of if it's made a thousand rows or 10,000 rows, that's where I use the tool to so yeah. much. Yeah. Just put it in there, give it an A index or something like that and let it run with your cursor and you can always see oh oh it's at 20,000 now nice so I can get a cup of coffee and when I come back it's probably done or whatever yeah yeah I uh it, and I remembered a couple others um well one in particular that I'll, I'll demonstrate here when we get to it which is a fun one for exactly what you're saying uh but let, let's let's finish with the um um I had one other one. I thought I had one. Other. Oh, the tray tip, right? Which is, that's just being able to, to change the, what pops up over your icon that's running in your system tray. Yeah. Which is, I like that one because it's not intrusive and yet, you know, you don't necessarily have to alert the user or whatever yet. You can have something that if they do want to check it, they know you can go over there and there it is. Right. It's nice. Yeah. I feel it's used very less than what it was. Maybe it was in the beginning of seven or, or maybe it was back on XP. I can't remember, but I felt like the trade tip was used more than what it is now on 10. I don't often see toy tips anymore, mm. but yeah, to, to me, it, it, they still make good sense. And I've, I've also used those for kind of like notifying Let's say I've often had something running in the tray that might keep um, tabs on if new emails come in. And you can be notified of getting a new email by Outlook, but if the script is actually doing something with the email, like uh, moving it or 
yeah. parsing it or, or whatever it needs to do, then just pop up a small notification down in the corner saying, I've done my thing. So, so kind of like just notifying me that, hey, it, it worked. It did what it needed to do. And I don't need to do anything, but I was notified that it happened as I wanted it to. So yeah, yeah. to me, it, that makes a lot of sense from it, it with a tool tip, with me maybe working in Excel or Word or whatever it might be working with, something popping up uh, right above where I might be working with my mouse. Mm -hmm. Might not disturb, but it will still take up screen space. Mm -hmm. and and stop me from doing whatever I'm doing, where as that small corner pop up, I might not, might not even need to look at it because I know what it's saying, right? Yep. Um, and and sent, let me go ahead and share. Since you said the word notify like 20 times there in a minute, um, <laughs> I, I wanted to, uh, to say this, this notify function I found on the forum. I'll try to remember yeah, to put yeah. a link in here. Um, it's a great one. It really is. It's super simple. So here's the title. Here's the message. And in my example here, I have message and then a new line and then body. Um, this is the duration will be on the screen. The size, of, I think, let's see. Is that, oh, that just has options. But there's, um, I think that's I think the. Yes, it's text size and text margin and stuff like that. Okay. And then the color of the background. And this is the speed. I, at least I made a little reminder for myself here. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna hit this and down here, you'll see here's what pops up, right? And this this thing is awesome because you can tell it, hey, stay up until I click it. You can have it, you can do multiple, like actually if I did three of these in a row, um, and let's, let's change one just a little bit to make it obvious. So I'm gonna rerun it. So there's the, they they will stack and then they disappear. This is one of those things I mentioned earlier, but people complain about the message box being kind of quirky and old looking. These things look very cool, right? And they're fancy. And yet it's a function that I can call and, you know, super easy to use. Yeah. And you can do even more with them. Even oh, if you don't like the yellow or the blue or right. you can change the border color and the border width and the border size and put in images. Yeah, exactly, and yep. um, change the, the text font, and yeah, th there's almost nothing that you can't do with it. So yeah, I, I like it quite a lot, and, and you can get almost any feel you like with the Notify box. Um, so this other one, I'm gonna sleep inside my, uh, this is a loop, um, it's going over this data, and it really doesn't matter, right? But this data set taskbar progress, um, this this I wrote um, a long time ago, but it's gonna update when I, I'm gonna relaunch it here now when I run it, as it's going over each loop, it's gonna update, it, unfortunately it was really fast. So see it updating where you are? So mm -hmm. now I know it's done because it's completely full. So I like this one because as you said earlier, I don't have to, um, go look at anything. It's it's already on my screen the whole time. Yeah, right? and I can easily when I have thousands of these things. Like if I was to oh, add a bunch more of these, it, it's a lot. It, it, I don't know why it's starting. It's so weird that it's starting. Oh, well that now that shouldn't matter. There it goes. Yeah. Um, so see it itching its way across. I love these when I have a loop going and I don't want, I have that program in the background. Mm -hmm. I can just see what's going on with my script, right? Without yeah. switching to it. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. Um, but that yeah. was one that like, it, it was funny cause you know how, you know me, right? I turned so much stuff off in windows just cause I don't care about the fanciness. I want it to be clean and mean and fast and that's actually a setting I used to, I didn't know it's a setting, but um, yeah, I used to turn it off. I had never seen one and I was trying this function and people are like, oh, it works fine. I'm like, it doesn't work at all. And and then on a different computer it worked and I'm like, well, wait a minute, what what in the world? It took me a long time to figure out it's a stupid setting I turned off in Windows. <laughs> yeah, stuff like that just happens. Yeah. Yeah. But cool, yeah, so it's a it's a fun, easy, you look for the, uh, the the 
look for notify in the, uh, I'm sorry, either notify or set taskbar progress in the forum. I'll try to remember to link to it, but um, if you just search the forum for it, you'll, you'll mm -hmm. find it. Uh, is there any others? I mean, obviously there's like the input box, but that's not really, oh, I guess creating a GUI, right? We should at least mention, right? You can create your own GUIs. Yeah, I, I'd say that's, I don't remember if that's what Notify actually does, but I do believe that's what it does. Mm. It actually is creating a GUI um, that, that you then control with the options of the Notify function, right? Uh, but not that that really matters, but to me, I, I currently have something where, where I have a static GUI that's showing. Mm -hmm. And you could, of course, give the GUI a status bar at the bottom mm -hmm. that you can then update with information. Mm -hmm. or, or you can have like um, maybe the, the title bar, you can make that blink. Or there, there's a lot of ways that you can make uh, or communicate with the user. You could also update values on the GUI if you wanted to. Um, there, there, there's probably quite a few ways that you could use a GUI to actually inform a user. Yeah, agreed. Um, and, and, and of course, you could have it automatically updating, you know, and just have it off to the side um, so you can keep track of multiple things at one, basically make it like a plugin almost, right? Of a status update of what's going on. Yeah, if let's say you had a lot of stuff running, you could probably have a, a central GUI that that just runs always and have whatever send their information to that. Again, it depending on on what you like, uh, and and if it's for you or if it's for sharing, but it's for you if it's just for you, then yeah you could probably do quite a few things with yeah. GUI. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, that's you know, the beauty of auto hockey, right? Is it is, it's, it's what you want. And it's a lot of it's built in, right? It's, it's the functionality is built in. You have to create some of the stuff, but it's, it's great. It's so easy. Yeah. And it still has some, uh, yeah. How, how old is auto hockey now? 15 years or something like that. And it, it's almost an adult. Yeah, almost an adult. Yeah, yeah, and and people have been doing all these, uh, both advanced and and simple things so many times and shared it on the forums because that's the main point of, of sharing. So so you can search almost anything that you want to do, up until a point, of course. But yeah, um, even then, you you might be able to find it. I found something recently uh, where. What, what is it, Just Me, I think he's called. He had made a class at some point where you could add tool tips to your GUI. So, mm -hmm. so it's a built-in functionality of Windows uh -huh. that a control actually knows what its tool tip is. Uh -huh. um, and of course, lots of Dell calls and all of that interesting stuff. And I was like, ah, it's probably not gonna add that. But then he had made a class for it and I was like, hey, great, let me use that. And so again, I had not thought that someone had already made that, but of course, again, someone had. So yeah, I, I really love that. And, and of course, you can go into another community of whatever coding language you might be interested in and do the same thing but I'm at least happy that AutoHide key has yeah. the same. And, and one of the things that I like is that we are, we are on one version for the most part. Yeah. And, and, and um, we are on Windows. And if it worked on Windows XP, yeah. it will most likely still work on Windows 10. So even though it was someone who made it eight years ago, without updating it since, it will probably still work. Yeah. I really love that. I do. You know, that alone, which is a whole nother topic with auto hotkey version two, um, if it, you know, it, it losing that, it's not functionality, but it's ability, is that what it is? The, the, the backwards compatibleness of everything yeah. 
that that what you just said has, has been my experience in you know understanding is that like yeah you can fire it up on XP or one to seven or eight or ten. There are some little things you know that change like the UAC wasn't around and what in XP. I think the of seven was it the first it came out in I think. I can't remember when it was first yeah. out, but yeah, at least. But, it, but you're right. Overall, very very stable. Very, it's pretty amazing, honestly, that it, it works as well as it does. Yeah. I'd say I, I don't have my finger on, on the forum or stuff like that as much as I did at one point, but the internet and, and the way that things are running now and, and people being maybe more in chats than they are on the forum, at least some of the most active people. So instead of sharing as much on the forum, they, they might just get their fix oh. in the chats and, and that, that might be mean that the forum is losing out a bit i'm not sure but i'm right. i'm thinking out loud right i'm yeah. just guessing that that's a thing because i think we still have just as talented people as we had back in the day but i'm not seeing things as groundbreaking as we did at one point yeah. and so yeah i i don't know uh, i'm not sure maybe maybe people are just in another place now that they were back then, can't say. And I would love to be groundbreaking myself, but I've, there, there's just a point where you kind of end up not knowing enough perhaps as a non-programmer. At least that's how I've seen it, where when, when it becomes data types and how to use advanced tail calls and you need to go in and look at the headers of other files to find out what the values of stuff is and stuff like that. Mm. Yeah. I'm not the one who's going to solve Way that. beyond me. Yeah. 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 Awesome, man. Well, I think this was a, a good, good chat. We're at uh, yeah. 22 minutes. So it's good. Absolutely. Well, good call. I'll uh, see you soon. Yeah. Bye.